welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ, the podcast. I believe that the best coach you can ever have is that one person that is staring straight back at you every morning in the mirror, you. Join me in discovering some key strategies so that you can create an empowered life and inspire others to live theirs. Your journey to being your own best coach starts right now. Welcome back to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Today we're going to be talking about it's all about me. Me, 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 me. Have you ever met somebody where you have noticed that it's all about them? They're coming from a self-righteous place and sometimes they'll step over people, they'll look at situations and they'll manipulate different situations and it's all about them and there may even be times where you've noticed it within yourself where you've been self-centered you've thought about yourself and haven't thought of others I love this quote from Stephen Kedrick he says almost every sinful action ever committed can be traced back to a selfish motive It is a trait we hate in other people, but justify in ourselves. Let me say that quote again. Almost every sinful action ever committed can be traced back to a selfish motive. It is a trait we hate in other people, but justify in ourselves. Now, I often with the trainings that, that I do, the live training events that I have, and with all of these people coming to my live events, and they sit down and I often ask the question, what were you guys thinking before you came to the training? Because I want to know their mindset around whether they're about self or others. And I say to them, I want you to think about it. Were you thinking before you come to the training, were you thinking, I hope the train is going to be good. I better get something out of this. I hope the people are welcoming to me. I hope they accept me. I hope everyone likes me. Or were you thinking something like, how can I support the training today? How can I be someone, how can I be someone that makes someone else's day? How will I show up to this training and bring out the best in others? How will I make people smile today? How will I help people connect today? It's a very different way of looking at things. Now, as a speaker coach, one of the questions I get asked all the time is, how do I get rid of nerves? And it's simple because when you're nervous, you're making it about you. Therefore, you are self-focused. You are focusing on self. When you shift your focus and focus on your audience, your nerves will dissipate. So before you're getting up to speak, are you thinking, oh, I hope I remember what I'm going to say? That's self-focused, isn't it? Or are you saying, I hope my audience likes me? Oh, that's self-focused as well. Or are you thinking, I hope my PowerPoint works? That's self-focused as well. Versus thinking, how will I serve my room beautifully today? How will I bring out the best in people today? How will I teach some skills that are really going to help my audience today? Now, that is really shifting on service, serving others rather than focusing on yourself and you'll see it with speakers when they tell stories now telling stories as a speaker is a powerful way of delivering a message however have you ever seen a speaker tell a message a story and the story seems to be all about them and it even could be an interesting story but from an audience you look at it and you think why are you telling me this story because it's an interesting story, but I'm getting nothing out of it. So that is when a storyteller, a speaker, is telling a story, but it's all about them. So they might be telling a story and they might get 
poor me, like poor me, this has happened to me, so they get some sympathy. Or look at me, look how good I am, look what I've achieved, and they tell you a story. And so the story can be very much a look at me, it's all about me story versus a speaker telling a story and bringing the audience into the story. And so therefore you're making it about we because they feel like they're in your story with you. You get them to realize their own potential when they come into your story. You might teach them what skills and attributes that they already have that they need to tap into by talking about your story. It's a very different way of telling the story. The story isn't about me as the speaker. The story is about we and getting your audience into that story. Now, how we communicate and make decisions shows our level of emotional maturity. And when I look at focusing on me or focusing on others or focusing on we, it's like this pendulum and we can go too far over going, oh, it's all about me or focus on all about others. But it's about this equilibrium, this symmetry or this balance of saying, if I can focus on we and a win-win situation, that's a beautiful equilibrium. And that's the focus that we're going to be talking about today. Now, I don't know about you at the moment in Australia, we're watching Bachelor in Paradise. And I know, I know some of you will be listening and thinking, oh, JJ, you're watching Bachelor in the Paradise. Well, I am watching Bachelor in Paradise. <laughs> it's only for research purposes. <laughs> but the drama of that show, and it was fascinating seeing the first show. And those of you that haven't watched Bachelor in Paradise, it's this bachelor and all of these ladies come in and they're competing to for the bachelor's heart. And so one at a time, these beautiful women come in and they meet this beautiful man, this tall, dark, handsome man that's in uh, The Bachelor. And actually, I said it was Bachelor in Paradise. It isn't Bachelor in Paradise. It's Bachelor. It's just Bachelor. And so these beautiful women are coming through and one at a time they're meeting this Bachelor. And this lady comes through And she's walking down for the first time she lays eyes on this bachelor and he's tall, dark, handsome. And she's walking down this this corridor. And as she's walking, she's looking at him and she's got this sparkly dress on and she's walking and she says, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. And I'm thinking she's going to say, look at you, you're handsome or something about him that she's noticed because she's looking at him and she's walking towards him. But no, she doesn't say that. She says, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, aren't I just so sparkly? And, <laughs> and I just love it was like, like, look at me. It's all about me, 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 me. And then she gets to him and then she says, how much would you spend on my birthday present? Now, this is someone that she's just met and it really shows where she is on the pendulum. She's all focused about her. She was focused about how she looked and she even said about that and then she's asking someone, a complete stranger that she's just met, how much would you spend on a birthday present for me? So it's really interesting the language that shows up And the actions that we take will show a lot about where we're sitting most of the time on that pendulum. So we can either swing over to too much about self, about me, 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 and it's all about you and and not about others. Or we can swing over to others and that could be a detriment to ourself. Or we can sit in the middle where it's about we And we have this beautiful balance of self and of others and this equilibrium. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. So what happens when we're focusing primary on others? If we're focusing too much, if we overuse it, I call call this like building, we've got to build the muscle of self-awareness around where we sit 
each and every moment of our day. Now, if we're focusing too much on others, primary on others, most of our life, most of our time, what can happen is that that can be self-sacrificing at the expense of self. So you can be helping others and therefore you are not helping yourself. You might be saying stuff like, I said yes, but I really mean no because you want to help someone. So they say, oh, can you please help me? Can you babysit my children? You really want to say no, but you say yes instead because it's all about others. You may not value your own time because people will ask you for things and you say yes because you want to help others so much that you give up on your dreams. You give up the time that was valuable for you to be with your family or your loved ones because you're sacrificing yourself for others. Your health can suffer. You can burn out. You can attract people that take advantage of you. You can even have financial hardship because you can attract people that might say, oh, can you just lend me some money? And because you're all about others, you might be saying, okay, yeah, I'll give it to you because you want to help others so much. But because you're overusing that pendulum and it's all about others, financial hardship could be a result of that. And then a result could be that you could be frustrated You could become bitter. You could become regretful because you're saying yes when you mean no and you're doing everything for others at the detriment of yourself. And and we call it Stephen Covey, the wonderful Stephen Covey when he was alive, would call this a lose-win situation. So you lose, the other people win. And you go around your life always losing, not always, but a majority of the time losing because you've got a lose-win mentality of being the, you could call it the martyr, that you're helping others so much it's a detriment to you, so you lose and they win. And the balance overall is that you lose and they win. Now, on the other end of the pendulum, It could be primary self-focused where you can sacrifice others. You do anything to get what you want. It's like you have others, like they're pawns in your game. You're a taker, not a giver. Now, this can affect your relationships. You can be manipulative to get what you want. You may not even understand other people's worlds because you're not interested in their world because you have a mission and you're focused on what you're getting, not what you're giving. And therefore, that can definitely affect relationships, whether it's intimate relationships, whether it's your friends, whether it be your family, because you're coming from a place of self rather than understanding the people around you. You may do things if it only benefits you. So if it benefits you, I'll do it. If not, I'm not going to do it. Now, what can happen, an outcome of that, is that those relationships could break down because people can get sick of you not wanting to know about them or being able to see them in their world, understand them. They're sick of giving everything to you or and you're only giving when you get something back. And so your relationships could be very short term and you could become lonely because relationships can break down now these types of people when you're when you're so self focused you may the outside world might look at look at people that are very self focused and think that they're really confident well often they're not they're lacking self confidence it feels like they've got something to prove and therefore, they're, they're, they're using pawns for the game and they're coming from a, a place of self. Now, with their approach, it's very much a win-lose situation. As long as they win, they don't care if you lose. So they go around making decisions. Their behavior is very based on, I need to win. And I don't care if anyone else loses. The focus is on me winning. Where we want to be is that beautiful fulfillment place, which I call the we equilibrium, that balance 
where we can seek to understand others, that we can listen to others, that we have this beautiful balance of self, that we can love and nurture ourselves, and we can love and nurture others, that we can have really great confidence within ourselves. We have a care for other people. We celebrate other people's wins. We celebrate our own wins. And we are grateful. We celebrate gratitude. We have richer relationships. And we give and we receive with gratitude. Now, being in the we equilibrium is different from the giving to others. So the primary others Always giving to others and not giving to self is a lose-win approach because you're losing and they're winning. When it's self, primary self-focused, you're winning and others lose. Where the we equilibrium, when you're really focusing on a beautiful balance, a beautiful harmony of looking after yourself and focusing on others, then that is a win-win approach, a win-win scenario where you want to have that beautiful harmony where you both can have a beautiful relationship and you can win and they can win too. I love Stephen Covey's quote and I've said this many times before because it's really stuck with me. To seek first to understand then you too will be understood. I'll say that again. Seek first to understand, then you too can be understood. Today, we're not going to be talking about, it's not all about me, 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 me. It's about building the muscle of self-awareness. It's knowing that there could be this pendulum of you being too focused on yourself which is a a win-lose situation or too focused on others, which is a lose-win situation. It's about that equilibrium, that harmony, that symmetry, that balance of we, focusing beautifully on others, beautifully on self, and it's all about being together and having that win-win approach. So I want to finish with a quote that I wrote. As human beings, we are wired and programmed to be focused on self. We need to build the muscle of self-awareness around the equilibrium of we rather than just you or me. Thanks, guys. See you on the next podcast. Thanks for tuning in to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast and follow me on Instagram at JJ Speaker Coach. And remember to live with insatiable passion, create an empowered life and inspire others to live theirs.